Okay. Our next talk will be from Andreas Krenmeier from Austria. He will talk about secure server daemon programming under Unix and will show us some pitfalls which are not so obvious, but you should, of course, handle in your code. And he's working for a software development company in Austria. Have fun. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my talk. Hmm? I'm going to talk about the topic secure network server programming on Unix. Um, it's about the dangers and pitfalls of implementing a server daemon that provides some sort of service. Um, and I will talk about how to avoid the biggest security issues. Yeah, a few bits about me. I'm Andreas Krenmer. I work as a software developer. I have, well, an interest in security-related topics. It doesn't mean that I'm really the superhero or whatever um, in this area, but, well, I, I did some work, and it's quite interesting for me. Um, some of my previous work uh, works are um, the, the prototype for a, um, a new type of network intrusion detection system that I presented about uh, three and a half years ago um, at the camp at this time, and Contra Police, that's a, a heap smash prevention facility. Um, it has been mentioned last year in the talk about memory, memory allocator security, so some of you maybe um, um, already know about it. And here I'm going to present something new. Um, I'm going to talk about um, Chapter 2. Um, uh, I will talk what it exactly is. I will talk about it later. And um, it's an example for, well, how to securely program. So the agenda is a general introduction. Then I will talk about the design and implementation of uh, Chapter 2. Then about the possible attack vectors, the obvious ones, the not so obvious ones. So implementation errors in Chapter 2 itself implementation errors in SSL, TSL implementations, and uh, what we can do about denial of service attacks um, right at the application. And some of the conclusion, conclusions then we, that we can draw from it. So um, as an introduction, um, a very simplifying uh, view on, on writing secure code Write secure code a summary. Don't use system and be careful with buffers. And then an answer on slash dot. Brain surgery a summary. Open skull and poke around with stick. So um, a more sophisticated view on security issues than this is definitely required. And this summary doesn't even scratch the surface. Yeah, general, um, general coding style. There are really a lot of papers and articles about secure programming with language like C or C++ or whatever. But this is beyond the presentation. Um, it, th this presentation really doesn't cover any language-specific security issues. Um, um, everything I'm talking about is more on the operating system level. So um, even you, even you use um, a more secure language than C, um, this can be still interesting. So. Um, I will talk about if issues that well cannot pre, uh, pre, cannot be prevented by by the language um, itself. So uh, my advice is anyway use more secure languages like Dylan or C plus um, plus if you have the freedom to do so, um, and that's a, a practical pro uh, problem. There are so many great languages out there. Um, where you can really securely program at least on the uh, level of buffer overflows so that that kind of stuff is, is prevented. Um, but when you're working in the industry, you hardly have any chance to, to use these languages because there is so much uh, legacy code um, that you uh, cannot simply rewrite uh, because there's so many men hours, men months, men years in it, you cannot simply throw it away. After all, it's, it's um, most of the legacy code is, is more or less well tested or uh, 
um, widely used, so um, there is no chance practically um, to use Dillon or Eiffel or uh, other kind of uh, other languages of that kind, simply because you have to build upon something and cannot start from scratch. And I mentioned uh, C++ as a more secure language. Um, be sure to use modern C++, and by modern C++, I mean all the features and stuff that uh, comes with the C++ standard library. Um, uh, I, in my experience, um, most people who learn C++ do not learn about this really interesting um, standard library. You can do really a lot of stuff with it, and you don't need to do any basic uh, zero-terminated string handling or anything like that. And um, you, you, you produce cleaner code, better code, and um, uh, definitely code with less buffer, buffer overloads. Um, nevertheless, um, chapter two is written with C, um, and we had a hard time getting it really secure. Well, it's not 100% secure, so um, if you download the, the source code from the website, uh, I'm pretty sure one, the one person or the other will find um, some bug. So nobody's perfect, just as a disclaimer. Yeah, about chapter two itself, um, where does this come from? Um, my co-developer Clifford Wolf, some of you probably know him, uh, he regularly does lectures um, at the Chaos Communication Congress and he worked on Rock Linux and he had the necessi necessity to, to poke holes into firewalls, that means um, uh, to, to, to allow a, a certain computer to connect to, for example, SSH, but only for a time window of 30 seconds or something like that. And the first solution was called Trapdoor. It was Telnet-based. You simply connected uh, using Telnet, entered a secret code, and then um, the SSH port for your uh, source address opened and you were uh, able to connect. Of course, Telnet, insecure. Um, it was clear that it had to be reworked and the improvement is Trapdoor 2. Um, it uses HTTP instead of an ad hoc Telnet based protocol and more security through the use of SSL so we uh, only allow uh, HTTPS use so um, it's not possible to, to, to sniff those magic co codes or magic cookies as we call them. So. Um, the basic principle is um, you're entering a magic cookie um, and that magic cookie is associated with a certain command, for example, opening the port for the source address for a certain amount of time or doing whatever. In, in my old company, um, uh, we used it to, to, to restart um, certain services that were quite flaky. Um, we could even use, this, uh, use it um, from, from the mobile phone via WAP, and so it was, it's quite flexible, but uh, the main idea was this trapdoor thing. Anyway, you're, you're entering, the magic, entering the magic cookie, the HTTP request is um, received, the, the magic cookie is checked, and if it's okay, the associated command is executed. And then the success status um, is sent back to the client. So um, the naive um, and really simple approach we took was a master process that's ac that accepts the connection, it forks. Um, um, then you have a, a child process which again forks and is connected via uh, a socket pair. Or No, actually I used two pipes, but it would be, would be the same if you use a socket pair. And uh, this child processes, process uh, drops the privileges, hand, uh, receives the HTTP request, hands the cookie to the parent via the pipe. Um, 
the parent, this child process, then checks the cookie, runs the command if the cookie was okay, and sends the status back through the through back to the process. And the unprivileged child then sends it sends it sends it back to the client. That's quite simple. Um, we use this um, two uh, two stage um, thing uh, because you obviously cannot. Uh, 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 interact with with the, the client, which is the potential attacker, um, with a, a root process, and you need uh, root permissions to run this uh, command here. So it's it's really the naive approach, and of course, this famous quote: "For every complex problem, there is a solution that is simple, neat, and wrong." Chapter 2 is not really wrong, but um, when we looked at it closer, after we wrote the first version, we found some, well, some obvious and not so obvious flaws. And so we, we looked a bit further and then implemented um, well, code to prevent certain attacks. And the main attack vectors um, we identified was First of all, implementation errors in Chapter 2 itself, for example, buffer overflows, integer overflows, all that um, kind of usual stuff uh, you have to um, ca care about when you use a low-level language like C. Then another main attack vector is the SSL implementation, like for example, OpenSSL um, or GNU TLS or whatever you use. And there are also denial of service attacks, which can become a huge problem since we forked two times and new processes usually take quite a few of resources, memory, CPU time. So you need to prevent um, your own resource starvation. But what um, we, we cannot really care about is that uh, is, uh, are, are logical errors, but ideally um, such logical errors, errors, errors uh, should be found through unit tests. We haven't implemented any unit tests, so as I, as I said before, we're not perfect, but um, C code, um, unless um, you really design it from the very beginning uh, to be uh, capable uh, uh, to, to, to be unit tested, it's, it's almost um, uh, impossible to write really good unit tests. Usually C code is, is um, uh, very coupled. At least I haven't seen any really good C code that was uh, unit testable, at least not in the industry. Yeah, let's talk about the implementation errors themselves. Um, as I mentioned before, yeah, chapter 2 runs with root privileges, which is a, a big threat. And so you have this uh, one child process that interacts with the client and you really have to apply the principle of least privileges to this child process. That means you need to drop the user, the group, the, the user and group privileges you need to uh, put the process in, the, in a change root environment so that there is no possibility to interact um, with the environment of other processes with possibly higher uh, uh, higher privileges and that, uh, that this unprivileged process has no access to a usable file system. And of course, the communication between the two child processes, the unprivileged child process and the privileged child process, um, is um, going over um, two pipes. Or you can also use a socket pair. Um, and we use a strictly enforced communication protocol. And of course, what's also very important, you have to enable really strict resource limits. <coughs> 